Let's continue. So in this video, we're going to talk about the types of macrophages. The first type is called foamy cells. Foamy cells are essentially macrophages that have engulfed a lot of LDL. And LDL stands for low density lipoprotein and it's essentially your cholesterol transporter from your liver towards your peripheral tissues. So once it transports cholesterol towards your peripheral tissues such as your blood vessels, it gives it below the endothelial layer in which macrophages can get to and then oxidize this uh, LDL protein which makes it active and the macrophage can now engulf them and digest them. But since the LDL contains a lot of cholesterol, all of this cholesterol will be now stored in the macrophage. So imagine when it does it in excess amount. These will start to become very fragile cells that are filled with fat essentially. And as a consequence of this, in long term process, these can accumulate subendothelially causing the lumen of the vessels to decrease in size. So this will cause and at the same time it will cause a stiffening of the artery in a condition called atherosclerosis. So as you see in this picture right here, the yellow will represent all of your macrophages and other cells such as T cells and smooth muscle cells. These will start to accumulate there. This is a type of chronic inflammation. So what will be the consequence of all of this? Throughout your life, essentially everyone will get atherosclerosis. But the only difference is, is at what stage will you get it? You actually start to get it uh, in your younger years when you're around 5-10 uh, years old. You can get it in all of your vessels, but when you get it in excess amount, these will cause a narrowing of your arteries and eventually de these can even rupture. And by their rupture, these can cause formation of thrombosis, which would cause even further narrowing of the lumen, causing less blood reaching the tissue to be perfused. And all of this will cause infarction of different tissues. So when can this play a role? This is actually the most common condition that leads to ischemic heart diseases, strokes, gangrene necrosis, and many other conditions. This is a, the most common cause of ischemic heart diseases, which is the leading cause of death in the Western countries. An another type of macrophage can be hemosiderin laden macrophages. So, and these are also called heart failure cells. So why do they get this name? In this picture, you see a heart with two lungs. The left heart, the left ventricle, gets its blood supply uh, through the pulmonary vein. But if the left ventricle would fail, it cannot contract and move forward the blood. As a result, it would cause a backflow back towards your lungs. And as a consequence of this, the pressure of your alveolar capillary will increase. And this will cause your red blood cells to be leaked out into the alveolar spaces. As these are now not in their normal space, the alveolar macrophages will now come and engulf them. And as most of your iron in your body is stored in your red blood cells and macrophages will digest them, this will cause a reaction which will change the color of macrophages into brown. This is seen in pulmonary edema caused by left-sided heart failure. And therefore we call these either hemosiderin-laden macrophages, hemosiderin refers to excessive iron that can be harmful to the tissue eventually, and um, it's also called heart failure cells due to left-sided heart failure being the primary cause. Other type of uh, macrophages can be epithelioid cells and giant cells of Langerhans. This is due to your um, antigen presenting cells will present an antigen essentially uh, uh, some peptides from the digested material the digested material can be different bacteria such as uh, tuberculosis or bacteria from leprosy and uh, these will present them to the t helper cells which will convert into t helper cell type 1 which will in the future stimulate macrophages into more specialized form called 
peptidyloid cells. This will be induced by, primarily by a cytokine called gamma interferon. And as a result, these uh, epithelioid cells, epithelial resembling cells, will now surround, as you see in this uh, histological picture, will surround the synthesized uh, T helper 1 cell. And also around here you will see some um, T lymphocytes. All of these will surround this area and uh, start fighting off the bacteria that has been re-exposed. Sometimes the epithelioid cells can confluence and form Langerhans giant cells. And in this picture you can see one of them right here. You see here it has a horseshoe-shaped lineage of nuclei. And this is one of the ways you can recognize it. A consequence of all of this can be eventually caseating necrosis. And remember, the tuberculosis is not the only cause of granuloma. You have many causes. You can see granuloma in several diseases such as Crohn's disease, cat scratch disease, and many more. Another type of uh, macrophage is Teuton giant cell. Uh, these are seen after an infarction of your adipose tissue causing them to be necrotic. This can be seen especially in some santomas. Santomas are essentially cholesterol rich deposition in um, tendons. And the final type of macrophages can be foreign giant cells. This is seen in histiocytic granulomas. A good example of this can be a silicon implantation in which your body will recogni uh, recognize silicone as foreign. This will cause protein adsorption, not absorption, which is essentially accumulation of uh, different proteins, molecules, atoms, and so on. And also giant uh, macrophages that can even coinfluence and form multinucleated structures. One important thing about this uh, case of uh, silicone implantation is that it will slow down the healing of your normal tissue by this injury. And that's all there is to know about macrophages. Thank you for watching.